The best way to learn is to actually build things out yourself because then you get a real sense of what you know and what you don't know. And you also figure out where you need to improve your knowledge. Well, that's why I've created this challenge series. You can see here that I've got the design brief open. There's actually four branches for each individual uh, challenge. So if I come over here, you can see I've got a start branch. This is what you want to do if you want to start and design the whole thing from scratch. If you just simply want to see what I did in design, you can go th to the design branch. If you want to get the brief for how to code it, you go to the code branch. And finally, you can go to the finish branch to get the entire thing. Hopefully that's not co too confusing. If you can think of another way to organize this, uh, let me know. But for now, you can see that what I can do is start with this design brief, look through all this and jump right in. Okay, you ready? Let's go. Hey, what's up? My name is Chris and welcome to Coding in Public. You can see here that I've got GitHub open and I've got it open to challenge one start. Now, in this video, what we're going to do is the first stage of this challenge. This voting buttons component here, we're going to start by building out in whatever design software you want to use. I'm going to use Figma as we walk through this together. But the idea is that you do this yourself first and then come back and watch the video. All right, so here we go. I've got uh, some details here in the readme you can look at in the branch, like the font that we use, the different font sizes, colors, uh, the icons we're using. I show you the size of those, and then I give you kind of an extra thing. If you want to do something a little bit extra, go ahead and prototype the buttons in your design program. So go ahead and do that, pause the video, and uh, then play it when you're ready, and I'll walk you through how I would do this. All right, hopefully you had a good go of that. Let me just start with a blank Figma document. That's the program I'm gonna be using. And then let's jump over this way uh, to the readme. And I'm going to go ahead and copy that image and just drop it in over here. All right. So very first thing I want to do is go ahead and get the colors in here. And I'm going to set them up as local styles. That way I can reference them throughout the design. So I'm going to jump back over this way. And we're just going to copy each of these one after the other. Now I've got a clipboard manager called PasteBot that allows me to copy these and then paste them back in the same order. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And I guess I should have probably copied the names too. But we'll just try to remember those as we go. So over this way, the first thing I'm going to do is click add a new style, add color over here. We'll call this like background. And then I'll drop this in just like that. And I'll create a style. We can just do this one after the other. And now that I've got color styles, I can add those directly. So we'll call this uh, light. And again, just kind of one after the other, copying and pasting these things in. Now, this is unfamiliar to you. I've done an entire design course for Figma for developers basically because that's what I am and so I figured it would be helpful to others as I figured out stuff I figured you know what we always have to work with these programs so we might as well have a sense of how they they work so if you're interested in that feel free to check it out let me finish these up and I'll be right back with you all right so I've got all those colors in and ready to go the next thing I want to do I think is just going to be to create the actual buttons themselves so let me go ahead and start by hitting the F key and that will add a frame in here and this will be where our actual like buttons are so maybe we'll just call this something like voting buttons. Okay, so this is our actual component we're gonna be building out. And just to get it started, let's go ahead and click this, which will make it an actual component set. Now inside here, we know we need those icons of the thumbs up and the thumbs down. So let me jump over this way. And under plugins, there's one called Phosphor Icons, which you can get. You can, of course, just download this from the link in the readme as well, but there's an actual plugin in Figma, so that's what I'm gonna use. So we'll search for like, and just drag these things out right here. So one after the other. And I know that these things need to be um, 24 pixels according to the design brief, right? Let's see, 24 by 24, yep. So let's come back over this way. I'll grab both of these and just manually change their height to 24 and 24, same thing with the width. All right, so I've got those things set. Let's go ahead and just put them on a background so I can <laughs> see them. So we'll say like, like, dislike, all right, so there we go. We're going to drag these into our document. And there's a couple different ways we could do this, but I'm going to try to keep it as simple as possible. All right, so here we go. We've got our component. How do we get this in here? Well, what I want to do is turn this into an auto layout, which I can do by right-clicking and doing add auto layout or just hit shift A as well. And what this will allow me to do is just space stuff out, kind of like Flexbox would be. Now, the first thing I want to do is make sure everything is center aligned. So that's good. And then let me just grab one of these. I'll hit the option key and just copy it and paste it in here. Now, you may have noticed, let me redo that. As I do this, a little blue line shows. That shows you basically it's going to drop it inside of that auto layout frame. When I do that, you see I got this padding naturally around it. Now, if I click the frame again, here's where all the padding is coming from. It's here and here. Now, it's saying if I add a second thing in here, it will actually space them out with 10 uh, pixels, but I'm not going to be adding a second one, so I don't need to worry about that. 
Now, typically when I lay things out, I like to think on a grid system uh, as much as possible. And I'm sure there's actually real design theory behind all of this, but I just try to do what looks good and I find that some kind of grid system helps me. So I'm gonna start with a, essentially a four point grid system. And if I were to drag this over the top of this, you see, we're kind of getting close, all right? This is obviously a little bit bigger, so maybe I could drag this down and make it smaller. Since I know my actual thumbnail there is correct, then what I can do is maybe just set this to like 50%. I'll drag this up top, that way I have it as a reference system. And then let's get it right over the top of this um, and just drag it down until it matches. All right, well, that is close enough for me, so there we go. And so you can see here that we're just about right on the height as far as how it's supposed to look. Let me lock this so I don't click it anymore. But when it comes to the side by to side, we want it to be a little bit bigger. Now, I'm not totally sure what this would be, but I can just kind of play around with it. 15, uh, let's go 20, something like that. And then I should be able to drag this. Okay, so there we go. Um, so we're on this kind of grid system. And with it being 24 pixels by 24 pixels, that means this would be what, 64 and uh, 44. So that works. Uh, let's now add this border radius and my guess is i did this with four pixels since that's kind of my grip yeah that looks good okay now i need to have a border around this and if i pull this to the side you can see my border should be whatever this kind of like faded color is so let's come over here and first of all change a couple things the fill needs to be my actual background not just white uh, these strokes right here uh, everything here really should be not the total black but uh, the dark text black. In fact, maybe let's just select everything on the page with Control or Command and A, and then I'll select all of those and change them to that, and all of these and change them to the background. Okay, so now those should be all set. Um, I do need that border though. I still haven't added that, so let's add a stroke. And uh, it looks like it might be two pixels. So let's change that. The stroke color itself needs to be, I think, this muted color. All right, so that should be good to go. Let me actually move this uh, down Oh, I locked it. All right, move this down and out of the way and put this back up to 100%. Okay, so that looks pretty good for that voting button. We obviously need a couple different variations though, and there are several ways to do this. I think perhaps the easiest would just be to kind of use the traditional variants that are available in Figma. So let me go ahead and let's just add another component. So or another variant. So if I click, it should add one for me. And I did that by selecting the component first. All right, so now in this component set, I have two different variants. Now for this one right here, I want this to actually be the thumbs up. So let me drag this in here, and you'll notice that now we see that 10 pixel spacing between them, but <laughs> I'll delete that so we don't see that anymore. I'll grab both of these now though, and hit plus one more time. And I think I'd rather see these side to side because these are going to be my active states basically. So let's move these here. I'll reorganize this here. All right, what I want is for both of these to basically bleed this blue color. I see I'm getting an actual border around here and I must have added that somehow. So let me get rid of that. Now that doesn't work. Um, let's see, I think it's this and this. Both of these, I don't need that. Okay, perfect. Let's now change this and change this to my accent color. All right, so we've got a couple of different states. We need to actually declare these here though. So we'll have two different properties. One will be like and dislike, and the other one will be selected and not selected. So let's just create these as Boolean properties and not like the new 2.0 Boolean of Figma, but kind of the traditional way of setting up these Booleans. So what we'll do is say like, is, uh, how about, is liked? How about that? And we'll set the, both of these right here to true. And we'll set both of these down here to false. Now we have one other thing. If I click back on the component set, I need to add another property. And again, I'm gonna make it a variant, a kind of traditional variant, and this will be is selected. And by default, we'll set this to false. And then both of these need to be set to true. All right, so what we've done here is basically make a toggle on the sidebar. If I drag one of these out with option and, and click it out, you can see I can now say it's is liked or it's not liked, and it is selected or it's not selected. So I can use this very quickly in my designs now that I've got this component set ready to go. All right, hopefully that made sense. I guess I deleted these here. Uh, I don't need these anymore either though, since I've just got them embedded in the actual component sets. Okay, so let's next set up some text styles. So if I come back over here to local styles and set up text styles, uh, we know we've got enter, and let's come back over here, enter bold 24 and enter regular 18. So we'll call this like heading or something like that. And we'll change this to bold and change this to 24. All right, so that'll be my first one. And then let's add another one. This will be body. And this was what, 18 and regular and enter. Okay, cool. So let's now set this out in its own little auto layout. 
So once again, I'll hit the F key and click, and we can just call this like component or something like that. Um, and then I'll hit Shift and A to make it an auto layout. Now let's go ahead and add the text we need. So I'll hit the T key, or you can come up here and click text if you want, and then just click once inside of here and now add the text I want. Now, just like we did with colors, I can come over here and select one of my kind of pre-selected headings. So I'll do that. And I'll type out, was this article helpful? Now I need to actually change the text color itself to be the right text color. So there we go. Same thing with this component. Uh, although to tell you the truth, I want to delete the background eventually, but I guess we can just set it to my background. All right, so with that said, we've got that set. Let me go ahead and copy and paste another item. Now this is going top to bottom because that's how we've set up this right here. This auto layout is going top uh, to bottom down. What I want is to put everything in the center and eventually we're gonna space this out, I think a little bit more intelligently, but for now that should work. All right, uh, the other thing I wanna do is make sure that this is center aligned for both of these as far as the text themselves. And let's go ahead and change this to my body. Now here I'm gonna do uh, five out of six, found this helpful. Once again, let's select this text, and this time I want to use my muted color right here. And then finally, I've got one more piece of text, and that is simply have more questions, submit a request. So have more questions, uh, submit a request. You can see how that auto laid out adjusts for me automatically. So I'll first of all come over here, change this to that, and change this to my normal dark text color. Okay, so we've got some spacing issues, but at least we're getting stuff laid out properly. The next thing I want to do is actually pull out one of these instances. Now I can go ahead and option click and drag it out like this, and you can see it drops it right in there. The other thing you can do is come up here and look at your different components and drag it out this way. So either way that should work, and now that I've got them both there, that should work just fine. So let's set the is light um, first over here, just like we've got this way. So this one's almost good. I guess we never changed the border here either. So <laughs> the nice thing about creating these as components is I can change them in one place and they should update everywhere. So back over here, let's change these both to the accent for the border, and you can see how this one updates. Okay, so cool, let's drag this over here, and this one should just be is not liked. Now both of these I want to be side by side, and the best way to do that, again, is with an auto layout. So with both of those selected, I'll hit Shift A, that will add them as an auto layout, except it's going the wrong way right now, so I wanna move it this way, like this, and then put these in the middle. Well, the cool thing with an auto layout is even though these put them in the wrong order, I can just drag this one over here and it just swaps them and it gives me that same spacing. Now, again, we want to think about this on a grid system. So what I want to do is think about this where I've got so many pixels here, so many pixels here, so many pixels here, kind of all on a grid system. Again, I'm using kind of a four point grid. So what I'm going to do is set these two to just four. All right, so they're the closest. And that looks a little close to my design. So maybe I, I go eight. You can see here I've got extra spacing here, so these kind of need to be in their own auto layout as well. So you, we've got nested auto layouts all throughout. So I'm going to grab all three of these now and hit Shift and A. So now they're their own, own auto layout. I know it's not going to be 8, all right? It could be something like 12, but I think 16 might be the right number. Okay, so again, we're just using that multiple of 4 all throughout. Now finally, since this and this are direct child of this component, I can just change this spacing here and we should be set to go. So let's set this to something like, I know it's not gonna be 16, because that's what I just did. 20 is probably not enough, how about 24? And that looks pretty close to me. And if I drag this over the top of this and change this to something like 50%, and maybe move this all the way to the top, you can see that if you don't look too carefully, that looks just about right. It looks like maybe I shrunk this some. All right, so that is pretty close for my liking. I know that's not perfect, but close enough to basically accomplish the design brief we wanted to. Now, the other thing I'm noticing is we've got our same problem over here, so let's get rid of this, and let's get rid of this. And as one final check, I'm going to go ahead and Command A everything and just double check that I don't have any weird styles. So I've got this color for the actual border of the component set, but other than that, I'm using all the right colors here, and these should be all using like my body or my heading style, and they all are. All right, so we've got this set and ready to go. Now there's kind of a bonus challenge, which is can you hook these up to where when you click one, it toggles between selected and unselected. So that's what I'm gonna do now, but no worries if you didn't do that. So the way you do that in Figma is come over here to prototype, and I'm gonna select this, and I'm gonna drag it over here to this way. And this works, so on click, change it to that, and let's go ahead and smart animate it. And I think they've removed it to where you have to like go back and forth because it looks like it just switches back and forth, but I could be wrong. You might have to actually come over here and do the same thing here. 
is selected is liked. So yeah, I think you do. Okay, so never mind. Forget that. <laughs> Let's come back over here. Same thing. Change it, smart animate, and it's smart enough to kind of follow that. So that should be good to go. If I come over here now and I go ahead and play it, that should allow me to click these and switch them in and out, which is what we want. All right, cool. Well, small little kind of bonus challenge, but uh, if you don't know how to do that, that's kind of a cool way to show off your design and give people a realistic understanding of what it's going to look like. Well, I hope you enjoyed the design side of this. In the next video, we're going to code this thing out from scratch. All right, I'll see you over there. Happy designing.